Good afternoon. I would like to ask uh, everyone to please rise for the posting of the colors and remain standing for the invocation led by Susie Warden, the senior class president, the Pledge of Allegiance led by Felicia Sigmund, the student council president, and the national anthem led by the Bullard High School Band. Would you please bow with me for a word of prayer? Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day and allowing all these people to gather here. Thank you for the men and women that we are going to honor, for their service that they've made to Bullard, and just for our country. And we ask that you bless us and our community in allowing us to just continue to have this ceremony and have many more people to honor. We uh, just honor and glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. my pleasure today to welcome each of you to the second Bullard ISD Wall of Honor induction ceremony. The purpose of this celebration is to recognize and honor the accomplishments of individuals who have had a tremendous impact on Bullard ISD as students, teachers, and community leaders. I appreciate your attendance today and your interest in the activities of our school district. I would like to introduce and recognize several people today. First, I want to acknowledge the Bullard ISD Wall of Honor Committee. Without their tireless work over the past year, this ceremony would not be a reality. Those individuals are Jan Berry, Gwen Dupree, Lynette Hughes, Billy Lawson, Sally Cowan, Angie Peters, and Lisa Williams. I would also like to re recognize our school board after all, it was their vision to establish a wall of honor to express the district's appreciation to the individuals whose names will appear on the wall. Our school board is made up of President Dr. John Alexander, Vice President Karen Pedruco, Secretary Tony Johnson, 
Tiffany Kurgan, Gary Roberts, Michael Roy, and Brian Watley. In our 126th year, Bullard ISD now recognizes and celebrates the heritage and contribution of individuals whose impact will be felt forever in our community. While not every deserving individual that has been involved with Bullard ISD will be inducted today, in future years, our district will be able to annually honor and recognize these individuals with the Wall of Honor. Now, please enjoy a slideshow of pictures of our honorees while an ensemble from the Bullard High School Choir performs a selection. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you'll find you see the truth that a hero lies in
At this time, it's my pleasure to honor each of the individual Wall of Honor inductees with a special bio of them that was put together by uh, Lynette Hughes. Lynette normally does this, but she is incapacitated uh, after recovering from some minor surgery. Um, so I have the pleasure of introducing uh, you to each of our honorees today. Donnie Barron. Donnie Barron was married to Kim Barron from Charlotte, Texas in 1983. They have three children, all of whom graduated from Bullard High School, and one beautiful granddaughter. Daughter Amanda, a ninth grade teacher in Deer Park, who's married to Brian Randolph, a youth pastor at Golden Acres Baptist Church in Pasadena, Texas, and mother to that granddaughter, Avery Ruth. Son Trey, who is a senior at Stephen F. Austin, and engaged to Jamie Adair, and son Andrew, sophomore, Dallas Baptist University. Donnie graduated from Robert E. Lee High School in 1982 in Tyler. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Mary Hardin Baylor, where he majored in religion and sociology and minored in Spanish. Donnie's seminary training is from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth. Donnie Barron proudly served his country when he was in the United States Army from June 1986 through August of 1995. He was stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia, Fort Ord, California, and Fort Hood, Texas. He served in the inf infantry with the 7th Infantry Division, 2nd Armored Division, and 522nd Military Intelligence Battalion. He also served with the 18th Airborne Corps and served in Panama, and is a veteran of Desert Shield, Desert Storm. His final tour of duty was an instructor in military operations in urbanized terrain school while stationed at Fort Hood. Donnie has been blessed to pastor in Colleen, McLeod, Bullard, and is currently pastor of First Baptist Church of Rusk. He pastored in Bullard at Bullard Southern Baptist Church from October 2000 to February 2011. While living in Bullard, he served on the Bullard City Council and several city committees. He and his wife were active in BISD life as well. He enjoyed everything from cooking burgers for students and faculty to dressing up like Santa Claus, especially for the Education Foundation. He was given the privilege to be the announcer and the voice of the Panthers and the Panther Band for several years. He served three terms on the District Improvement Team, served on the School Bond Election Committee, the Bullard Education Foundation, and several other BISD committees. It is indeed an honor to place Donnie Barron on the Wall of Honor. Congratulations. Jason Campbell. Jason Campbell was born in Beaumont, Texas on November 8, 1968. He attended school there until 1984. After a chance meeting at the Bullard gas station along with a brief, brief conversation between Jason's dad, Van, and Mr. Leonard Speaker, who was the high school principal, Mr. Campbell knew this is where Jason would attend high school. Moving from a 4A to a 2A school district was quite a change, but for the better. Jason's freshman year at Bullard was a year of many firsts. 
It was the first year in the what was then the new high school, now the middle school, the first year for Bullard to have a band, and the first year for Bullard to compete in high school football. Jason was active in many organizations during, during high school. His main interest was the Bullard High School Marching Band, where he played trumpet and made all district three years. Ms. Hughes, Ms. Partain, Ms. Tedder, Ms. Berry, and Ms. Etter stand out as his favorite teachers. During high school, Jason became active with the Bullard, Bullard Volunteer Fire Department and served for 12 years, working his way up to assistant chief. After graduation, Jason continued his education at Tyler Junior College, and in 1988, Jason met his future wife, Cindy Moore. They married in 1990. Jason credits his grandfather, Rudolph Whitaker, as the reason he loves construction. They spent countless hours building things while Jason was growing up. In 1999, Jason began a career in the supply end of the construction industry. Several of his customers encouraged him to try building a home to sell. They saw his potential and knew he would be, a great, he would be great working with new homeowners. His business, Campbell Custom Homes, was established in 2003 and is very successful. As Jason says, and I quote, whether you're right-handed, left-handed, short or tall, we make the house fit you. Jason says he has detailed cars, mowed yards, cleaned offices, and rented himself out as Santa Claus, but building families a dream home is what he was meant to do. Jason and Cindy have been married for 21 years and have two beautiful daughters, Sarah, a sixth grader, and Katie, a second grader. Jason and his family attend Rice Road Church of Christ, where he serves as a deacon. He also serves as a board member of the Bullard Chamber of Commerce, serves on the board of directors of the Tyler Area Builders Association. He is accredited by the State and National Association of Home Builders and Tyler Better Business Bureau. Jason and Cindy are involved in and support the Bullard Education Foundation, the FFA, the Bullard Band Boosters, and numerous city organizations. Jason, it is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to the Wall of Honor. <laughs> Kenneth King. Kenneth was born in Vider, Texas on June 3, 1946, to parents Mary and Willis King. When he was six years old, they moved to Mount Selman, where he attended elementary school. As a freshman, he attended Bullard High School, where he played basketball and was a member of the FFA Par Parliamentary Procedure Competition Team. Kenneth graduated from Bullard High School in 1964 and married his high school sweetheart and best friend, Linda Baker. They had two beautiful daughters, Kenda and Kelly, both of whom attended and graduated from Bullard. They are subsequently blessed with two grandsons, Curtis and Alex Dean, both of whom attended Bullard schools. Curtis graduated from Bullard High School in 2009, and Alex is currently a junior at Round Rock High School. In 1972, Kenneth was elected to the Bullard ISD Board of Trustees, where he served five terms. There was a lot of growth and change during this time. A new high school was built, football was introduced, and the first stadium constructed. The band program was started, and a new elementary school was built. In 1997, after a 10-year respite, he was again elected to the Board of Trustees, where he served another three terms. During this time, additional land was purchased, and another, another new high school facility was built. In addition to working in his family masonry business, he also served many years as a bivocational music director in local churches, including First Baptist Church of Bullard and Bullard Southern Baptist Church. He and Linda are proud to continue to reside in Bullard. Kenneth, we take great pride in recognizing your service to Bullard and welcome you to the Wall of Honor. John K. Lofton, Jr. On, 
on May 28, 1924, west of the Teaselville community, Kennedy and Lula Bell Lofton welcomed their first child, John Kennedy Lofton Jr., to the world. John was born into a family that was one of the original founding families and learned the importance of faith, family, community, and hard work. At the age of six, John started school and completed the ninth grade at Eureka School. The school burned and Eureka consolidated with Bullard in 1939. John loved basketball and played varsity ball for two years under Coach Leonard Smith, graduating from Bullard High School in May of 1941. On August 10, 1941, four months prior to Pearl Harbor, John caught the bus in front of the White Drug Store in downtown Bullard. <laughs> Pardon me. And started his military life that would cover the next 23 years. John would witness world history firsthand with his military service that spanned World War II, Korea, and the Cold War, including being stationed in Australia, New Guinea, Japan. Canada, Alaska, and multiple air bases in the continental U.S. In 1950, while on liaison duty with the Royal Canadian Air Force in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, John met and married Lorena Joyce Swinton. They had three children, John K. Lofton III, Robert S. Lofton, and Sharon R. Lofton. All would become future graduates of Bullard High School and go on to professional careers. In 1963, Master Sergeant John Lofton decided to retire from the Air Force and return home, return home to Bullard. He made this decision due to his family being young and wanting to be able to see them grow up. John purchased a small business from his uncle and moved back to, to Bullard, starting his three children in school for the 1963 school year. From that time on, regardless of the complexities of raising a family, John served his community when called. He served as a Bullard School Board trustee from 1964 to 1973, served as Mayor Bullard three times, and served as a Bullard City Councilman numerous times spanning the last 40 years. His last term ended in 2001, and he was named the 2002 Man of the Year by the Bullard Chamber of Commerce. Now, at age 86, John and Lorena have been married 61 years and have nine grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. Although John has retired from public life, he still takes pride in his family and community. He especially takes pride in the Bullard school system, having seen it come from a Class B school with 125 people total enrollment 47 years ago to the Class 3A school with multiple campuses and state-of-the-art facilities and an enrollment of 2,100. Thank you, Mr. Lofton, for your service to our school and community, and welcome to the Wall of Honor. Bruce E. Lyons. Pastor Bruce E. Lyons was born June 1932 in Bullard, Texas, to Amos Lyons and Nancy Walker Lyons. He is a lifelong community member who has been very supportive to this district for many years. Pastor Lyons is married and the father of six children who attended and graduated from Bullard High School. He graduated from Stanton High School where he was class salutatorian. He then attended Texas College, Jacksonville Business College, and Southern Baptist Seminary External Division to pursue biblical studies. Pastor Lyons is a member of the original East Texas Baptist Association, the Texas Educational Baptist Convention, President's Prayer Team, Lindale United Mission Fellowship, and the Pride and Progress Advisory Board. Pastor Lyons' motto is, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Thank you, Pastor Lyons, for your service to the community and to our district, and welcome to the Bullard ISD Wall of Honor. John.
Joseph Calvin McBee. Joseph Calvin McBee was born on March 28, 1927, which happy birthday uh, or uh, wishes are in order, I believe. In Wichita Falls, Texas, the middle of five siblings. He did his schooling in Wichita Falls, graduating in 1946 from Wichita Falls High School. He met his future wife, Frances Hillen, at Kerrigan Elementary School. They went through the school system together and were married on April 5, 1946. Joe's first job was at his dad's shop in Wichita Falls, Texas, Lock and Key Company. He worked there doing lock work, repairing bikes, etc., until joining the Navy in 1945. After serving on the battleship New Jersey, he was stationed in 1945-1946 on Inuitok in the Marshall Islands, working in the officers' club, repairing slot machines. After returning from the Navy, he worked for Shell, Shell Oil Company, but decided he liked the telephone business. He retired from Southwestern Bell after working 43 years with 42 years of perfect attendance. Joe and Francis are the parents of Cindy McBee Gallantly. Cindy, as you just saw earlier, is the choir director and an elementary music teacher here in Bullard ISD going on 27 years. Brendan Gallantly is their grandson who's a graduate of Bullard High School and a student at UT Tyler. Joe has enjoyed hunting and fishing, especially dove hunting at the Wagner Ranch in Electra. His favorite pastimes are eating breakfast every morning at Cox's Grill and being joined there by Brennan and going to Ben Wheeler the last Saturday night of the month to hear the East Texas Jazz Orchestra play. After being a deacon for several, several years, Joe served as an elder for the West Irwin Church of Christ for 17 years, teaching classes and doing some song directing. He was the Boy Scout Master of Troop 354 for three years. Before becoming Scoutmaster, he served in other capacities with the Scouts, going to several camps in Texas and Colorado, and teaching merit badge courses. When Brennan was in the fifth grade in Bullard, Joe was asked by Mrs. Glenda Barron to become a class grandpa, which he did for several years. Everyone knew him as Papa Joe. He volunteered with Mrs. Lester and Mrs. Lott also. He enjoyed working with the young people in the classroom. In addition to his volunteer work in the classroom, he also volunteered to help Mr. Sleeper in the technology department at Bullard ISD. To Mr. McBee, otherwise known as Papa Joe, we thank you and honor you and congratulate you on your selection to the Wall of Honor. Jewel Gwen Phelps. Jewel Phelps was an educator who taught at Bullard and Noonday for over 40 years. She began teaching in 1923 following her graduation from Bullard High School. Mrs. Phelps attended Lon Morris College and received her Bachelor's of Science degree from Stephen F. Austin State Teacher College in 1937. Mrs. Phelps was well respected by her students as well as her colleagues. Everyone who knew her has a Mrs. Phelps story. After retiring, she continued to be involved in education as a substitute teacher. Mrs. Phelps was a founding member of the Bullard Community Library Board and served as the first librarian once the construction of the library was completed. Mrs. Phelps was the associate editor for the book entitled Bullard, Its History and People. In 1976, Mrs. Phelps was recognized by the community as the Queen of Bullard at the Bicentennial Blastoff and Homecoming. For years, Mrs. Phelps opened her home as a host parent to foreign students who attended local colleges. She truly had a positive influence on students and faculty at Bullard ISD for many decades, and we are proud today to honor Mrs. Jewel Phelps on our Wall of Honor. Leonard Smith. Nothing is ever lost, it's somewhere on my desk, was a quote from Leonard Smith. Leonard Smith was a graduate of Bullard High. 
After graduation, he attended Jacksonville Baptist College and later attended Stephen F. Austin, where he obtained his teaching degree. He was married to Rachel Tarrant in July of 1937. They had two daughters who are here today and, and are accepting the award on behalf of Mr. Smith, Barbara Jo and Faye Lynn. Both of them attended Bullard schools and live in the Bullard area as well. Leonard started his career in Bullard as principal of Bullard Elementary. Later, he served as superintendent. He had many things happen in his days as a teacher. He became coach of the girls' basketball team and had a very successful career. At one point, he reached the state finals and was defeated by Maydell after a long shot was made to win the game as the clock ran out. Leonard was so proud of his girls and took really good care of them. On Friday, when there was a district game, the team was invited to his house for a steak dinner prepared by his wife, Rachel. He also took care of all the ankle taping himself. When the games were over, any player that needed transportation home was carried by Leonard. At one point in time, Bullard was in serious financial trouble. The average daily attendance dropped below 200 students, and there was not enough money to finance the kitchen. Through the efforts of Leonard and the Bullard School Board, this was avoided. Leonard and the community organized a can, excuse me, a drive to can vegetables for the upcoming year. Local farmers donated the vegetables and local women canned them so there would be food for the kitchen. He had a very unique way to discipline students. On a winter makeup day on a Saturday, several of the sophomore girls decided since it was Saturday, they didn't have to be in school. They left and started walking. About halfway down Main Street, a school bus rolled up behind them. The bus stopped and the door swung open. There sat Leonard behind the wheel. He got the girls back on the bus and they went back to school. Not a word was said by either side, but the girls were sure they didn't need to go to town during school hours anymore. The only rock building still standing at that time was the Ag Building. One night, Miss Barnes called Leonard to tell him the building was on fire. Miss Barnes lifted Leonard through a window so he could put out the fire. It's another recollection that was given. On another occasion, some of the graduating students needed some extra courses to get into TJC. Leonard volunteered his time to tutor the students so they could continue their education. He was also active in community affairs. In 1971, it was determined that a new Masonic Lodge was needed. Money was not available for this project. So he went to the bank and secured a personal loan to build the lodge. He was responsible for the loan payments. But Leonard never had to make a payment because every note was made on time by the membership. Leonard was also responsible for starting the Bullard Cemetery Association. He, Temple Tarrant, and Fred Stripling measured and numbered all grave sites so people would know where their own kinfolk were buried. The family has received several letters from former students of Leonard's always thanking, of Leonard's, always thanking him for the direction he gave their lives. On that note, we are proud to honor Mr. Leonard Smith today and have him on our wall of honor. The final eight recipients of the Wall of Honor are all individuals who were Bullard students and went on to serve our country and be killed in action in World War II. As our committee discussed who should be honored, the suggestion was made by Mrs. Hughes to honor those individuals that gave their lives for our country. So even though I don't think we have any family members here of any of the uh, of any of our heroes that served, please join me in honoring them as I read each of their bios individually. Private First Class, Archard Orville Brewster, born May 1st, 1920, died June 1944. Archard Orville Brewster was nicknamed Heavy because he defended his little sisters. He was the son of Archard C. and Gertrude Howard Brewster and was the husband to Pauline Griffin. Heavy attended Bullard Elementary and high schools. 
In the 1939-1940 school year, he played forward for the Bullard High School basketball team. Heavy enlisted in the United States Marine Corps on June 17, 1942, and trained at Camp Elliott, San Diego, California, after which he was shipped to, to the Pacific with 1st Marine Division in September 1942. Upon arrival in the Pacific, he served with the Marine Invasion Forces on Tulagi, Kavutu, Tonabago, Florida, and Guadalcanal, British Solomon Islands. He also served with the 2nd Marine Division Invasion Force on Tarawa Gilbert Island and Saipan Marinera Islands. Mortally wounded by a Japanese sniper on Saipan, Brewster managed to kill the sniper, but later died of his wounds before sunrise the next morning. Private First Class Brewster was awarded the Asian Campaign Medal of Battle Stars, two presidential unit citations, and other decorations. He was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously. Private First Class Archard, Bruce, Archard Brewster is buried somewhere on Saipan, northern Marinara Islands. We honor his memory today by inducting him into the Wall of Honor. <laughs> Private First Class L.G. Clyburn, born October 21, 1920, died December 29, 1944. L.G. Clyburn was the son, son of George Walter and Louisa Victoria Clyburn. He was a 1942, gradu 1942 graduate of Bullard High School. L.G. married a young lady from Vallejo, California named Josephine Rodriguez. He entered the United States Army in 1942, where he was assigned to Company A, 329th Infantry. Private First Class Clyburn served in the invasion of France and the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium. He earned the European Theater of Operations Medal with Battle Stars, the Presidential Unit Citation, and other decorations. Private First Class Clyburn was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously as well. He was killed in action in Belgium on December 29, 1944, and there he lies at rest. And we welcome him and honor him today in his induction to the Wall of Honor. <laughs> Private First Class Walter W. Hayes. Born July 22, 1925, died November 15, 1944. Walter Hayes was the son of John L. Hayes and Jewel Dark Hayes. He attended Bullard schools. Walter entered the U United States Army in February 1944, where he trained at Camp Fannin, Texas, Camp and Camp Van Horn, Mississippi, and Fort Meade in Maryland. He was assigned to the 10th Infantry Battalion where he served in the invasion of France. Private First Class Hayes earned the European Theater of Operations Medal with Battle Stars and the Presidential Unit Citation. He was also awarded the Purple Heart posthumously. Private First Class Hayes was killed in action in northern France on November 15, 1944. He is buried in, Flint, in the Flint Cemetery. Today we honor his service by inducting him into the Wall of Honor. <laughs> Private First Class Thomas Wesley Phillips, Jr., born 1923, died July 3, 1944. Thomas Wesley Phillips, Jr. was the son of Thomas Wesley Phillips, Sr. and Maddie Tomlin Phillips. He graduated from Bullard High School in June 1941. He was a member of the Bullard High School basketball team and served as art editor of the Panther Yearbook for the 1940-41 school year. He entered the U.S. Army in October 1942 where he trained at Fort Barkley, Texas and Fort Dix, New Jersey. Private First Class Phillips served in England and participated in the Normandy invasion of France. He earned the European Theater of Operations Medal of Battle Stars, the Presidential Unit Citation, and other decorations. 
He was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously. Private First Class Phillips was killed in action in Hedgerow in France on July 3, 1944. He is buried in the St. Laurent Military Seminary near Blasville, France. Please join me in welcoming him to the Bullard ISD Wall of Honor. Technical Staff Sergeant Willie C. Pierce, born February 7, 1912, passed away June 16, 1944. Willie Pierce graduated from Bullard High School in June 1935. He was the husband to Judy Pierce. He enlisted in the United States Army on September 25, 1935, and was assigned to an infantry division. He served at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and Fort Sam Houston, Texas, and then trained, trained at Camp McCoy in Wisconsin. Willie Pierce served in Northern Africa and in the D-Day invasion of France. He was wounded at Utah Beach sometime between June 6 and June 12, and died of those wounds on June 16, 1944. Technical Staff Sergeant Pierce was awarded the United States Army European Theater of Operations Medal with Battle Stars and other citations. He was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously as well. Willie Clarence Pierce is buried in the Bullard City Cemetery, and we welcome his induction to our Wall of Honor. Private First Class Jim Bob Smurl, born October 14, 1925, died March 24, 1945. Joe, <coughs> Joe Bob Smurl was the son of Mac A. and L Lillis M. Smurl. He graduated from Bullard High School when he, where he was a member of the Bullard chapter of the FFA. Mr. Smurl entered the United States Army Airborne in 1943 where he trained at Camp Maxey, Texas. He then served in England and participated in the Normandy invasion of France, the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium, and the push into Germany. Private First Class Smurl earned the European Theater of Operation Medal of Battle Stars, the Presidential Unit Citation, and other, another de excuse me, and other decorations. Joe Smurl was awarded two Purple Hearts. The first Purple Heart was for wounds received in France. The second Purple Heart was awarded posthumously. He was killed in action in Germany on March 24, 1945. Private First Class Joe Bob Smurl rests, besides, rests beside his mother in the Bullard City Cemetery. There is no mention of the sacrifice he made for his country, but he was 19 years old at the time of his death. And for that, we honor him with induction to the Wall of Honor. Private First Class, Claude H. Stanley, born September 2nd, 1923, died December 20th, 1944. Claude Stanley was the son of Mr. and Mrs. Walter H. Stanley. He was the husband of Willie Jewell Neely. Claude graduated from Bullard High School where he played forward for the Bullard High School basketball team. He entered the U.S. Army in March of 1941 and was assigned to the same unit as schoolmate Ingram, Ingram Walker, the 9th Infantry, excuse me, the 9th Infantry 2nd Division. Private First Class Stanley trained at Fort Sam Houston, Texas and Camp McCoy, Wisconsin. He served in North Africa, in the invasion of France, and in the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium. Private First Class Stanley was awarded the European Theater of Operations Medal with Battle Stars, the Presidential Unit Citation, and other decorations. He was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously. Private First Class Stanley was killed in action in Belgium on December 20th, 1944. He is buried in the Bullard City Cemetery. We welcome him to the Wall of Honor. <laughs> Private First Class Ingram G. Walker, born... October 12, 1924, died February 2, 1945. 
Ingram Walker was the son of Jesse Shane Walker and Mamie Ingram Walker. He graduated from Bullard High School in June 1942 and was also a member of the Bullard Future Farmers of America chapter. He entered the U.S. Army in October of 42. He was assigned to Company C, 9th Infantry, 2nd Division. Private First Class Walker served in the invasion of France, the Battle of, Bul the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium, and the push into Germany. He earned the European Theater of Operations Medal with Battle Stars, the Presidential Unit Citation, and other directions. Private First Class was awarded the, uh, Walker was awarded the Purple Heart posthumously. He was killed in action in Germany on February 3, 1945. Two years and nine months after his death, on November 21, 1947, Ingram Walker's remains were returned to his hometown and buried in the Walker family plot in the Bullard City Cemetery. With that, we welcome Private First Class Ingram Walker's name to the Bullard Wall of Honor. Please join me in welcoming all of these inductees, both current uh, who are here today with us, both present and those who have passed on in the ultimate sacrifice given for our country in being inducted into the Wall of Honor. Let's give one last round of applause. In closing, as a superintendent of Bullard ISD, it's my privilege to congratulate and thank our honorees and their families for their sacrifice and contributions to our district. This is just a small token of the appreciation the people in our district and the people in our community feel for the job you've done on behalf of our students and of the people in Bullard. It's been our pleasure to give back to you a little of what you have given to our district. After the colors are retired, the Bullard High School Band will play, the, play a selection as the honorees are escorted out into the foyer. Following completion of the band's selection, please join us in the foyer for reception and feel free to view the Wall of Honor located on the wall directly behind the back wall of the auditorium. So at this time, if you would, if you would do this for me, if you would rise for the uh, retirement of the colors, and then after that, after they're retired, please be seated while the band plays and the, and the uh, honorees are escorted out. 